Okay, so this demonstration is going to try to show you how to uh, draw the Batman logo using the pen tool in Adobe Flash, and we're using Flash CS4 in this case. Uh, let's see, getting started with this, there's a reference graphic. I'm going to right mouse click and copy it right now, so I have it ready to go in Flash. And then when I open up Flash, I can just go and paste that right down and use it as that reference image. A reference image is just something that we can use to get our way around this reference it's a good idea to label these things right away and also a good idea to lock reference layers and start drawing on a brand new layer. So now I'm going to zoom in on this thing a little bit and I'm going to choose my pen tool. I'll be drawing in this layer so I'm going to call this, I'll call this the bat. And the pen tool works by letting you plot points. Now before I even get started with this, I'm going to make sure that there's no weird snapping going on, no snapping to guides or grid or anything like that. Actually guides is not a bad idea. Let's turn on some guides to make this even easier. I'll turn on the rulers with view rulers and I'm going to drag a guideline just to the specific points that I know I want to create some symmetry. As an example, the bottom three tips of the, each wing and the, the tail uh, arrive at the exact same uh, vertical plane. And uh, outside edges, I think I can do those as well. So I'm just going to drag these all in place first. So the snapping to guides is going to be quite useful. This will make sure that you get great parallel on the trickier bits. Something like that. That ought to do for a start. And uh, I think, well, you know what? Just to line some other things up too. There's going to be a point there and a point there. A couple more. One and two. Okay, let's see if this works now. So here's the way I'm going to pull this off. Uh, it might be a good idea to toss some symmetry in there too for the tail. So the pen tool, now it's going to snap to those points and I'm going to try to click a point. I've just put one there. And then I'm going to try to find a, the top of a hill or the bottom of a valley to draw the next one. And when I click the next point, I'm going to click and drag. And to do this really consistently, I'm going to hold the shift key down. Shift key makes you snap to a perfect 45 or a perfect horizontal or a perfect vertical so that I can make these things really symmetrical. And I'm going to try to use this sharp points with a single click. And if you see something that doesn't work out so well, don't worry about it yet. We'll come back and fix that. The, uh, the middle point of this curve seems to be about here. So I'm going to choose this point here. And I'll try a perfect 45 for that. And then a point here. So you get the idea with the pen tool. It's clicking once gives you a sharp point. Clicking and dragging gives you a curve. And using this technique, it's not too hard. Whoops to go all the way around this thing. Now, in this particular case, snapping to the uh, guideline is a problem. Control-Z, take yourself back a step. Spacebar Control turns my tool into a magnifying glass, and I'll try to be a little more precise with it this time. Just kind of doing like this. In this case, Perfect 45 makes no sense, so I'm going to let go of the Shift key and just make a, a reasonable angle. And I can see a place here where it intercepts that vertical or that horizontal guideline. Now, I'm holding down the Spacebar so that I can scrub across this thing and I'm looking for the next points that are available and I'm rolling the wheel mouse down. So now I'm going to start navigating a little more precisely by being zoomed in a bit more. And if I can drag guidelines that line up to other points like this, I can try to echo the next point precisely too. I'm going to undo that. I'm just going to do a single click like that for that point. I can see the bottom of the shoulder here is where the next point goes. So now I'm trying to get the symmetry by putting points that are absolutely mirror opposites of each other. You can do this with a grid too. But if you make your own guidelines, you don't really need the grid. And it looks like I got a point right about here. And a point about here. And again, if this isn't perfect, I'll come back to fix that. I'm not going to try to fix it yet. Now it would be handy if I had a guideline so I can put this wing span pointed exactly the same place, right there. And I'm holding the shift so it's a perfect vertical. And I get really good curves. Now the original artist, when they did this particular drawing, or designed this logo, chances are they were using a tool very much like this, but this is back in like 1990 or 1991. And uh, there, there might be some mathematical reasons why things are looking like they are. So that gets me all the way around it. Awesome. You can count the number of points. Don't put more points than you need. It's just going to make it worse. Now, to modify those points and make them a little better, I'm going to use the sub-select tool, go in there and see if I can improve 
some of these curves a little bit. For instance, this one here, I could see it'd be improved if I could just take this handle and pull this a little closer to the target or reference graphic, and you can do that very easily. And it looks like it's not going to be absolutely perfect, but it's going to be very close. And if you've drawn this one the same way, you should be achieving about the same results on this side. This one here, I'll take that control handle and pull it towards its control point so that it, uh, it's a bit less of a curve. This one here, it looks like the entire point. I could actually kind of move this whole point one way or the other. Oops, undo. To try to make it fit a little bit better. Okay, so there's the idea all the way around, and you can check it scanning around there, find the next little imperfection. So it's the idea of just drawing the most logical points to define it first, and then going back and improving it slightly point by point. And in that way, we've just basically drawn the hardest part of the Batman logo uh, in record time. Double-click that. Let's turn off the reference layer. Let's fill in with a nice black color the bat and you get the idea. So there's our logo.